A, a slight tension between the two countries over the, these failures of military supply deliveries, hasn't there? Oh, um, well, in fact, you know, these are uh, old issues, but, you know, the uh, relationship between India and Russia is very strong. But the weakest uh, link of India-Russia partnership is the trade and economics. In the Soviet Union used to be India's number one trading partner. Today, Russia is India's, at, and it, it's now at number 32. Uh, this despite the fact that both the economies are doing very well in the last 10 years. So obviously there is something wrong somewhere. Uh, uh, the issues are quite known. Where are the problems? There, these are the problems concerning visa issues. There is information gap and of course problems of connectivity. Now both the countries are, uh, leaders from both the countries are uh, quite aware of these problems, but somehow they have not been able to resolve the problem. Uh, you know, these are very simple problems, but still they have not been able to resolve despite the fact they have very close political relationship as well as uh, strategic partnership since 2002. But this is uh, Putin's you know, first is that... visit. This is Putin's first visit since resuming presidency. Sorry? This is Putin's first visit since he has resumed presidency. So it's a very clear signal yeah. that he wants to put things right. Yes, yes. He wants to keep uh, certain things right. I mean, both the countries are trying for many years. Uh, you know, but uh, as far as Russia is concerned, India is a very good market because uh, India is number one importer of Russian arms. And even during this visit, I think they will announce a uh, couple of big deals. That's what the reports are. So in that sense, uh, from Russian point of view, this is uh, going to be a quite successful visit. Of course, the, I mean, the Indian market, the competition in the Indian market is intensifying in the last couple of years, but still 60 to 70 percent uh, imports from India are still from Russia. So in that sense, the relationship is very, very uh, strong. But the, uh, the, as I was saying, the weak point is really trade and economics, which is not really picking up. This is what I think they have been trying, but somehow quite unsuccessfully. You know, uh, as, you know when Soviet Union started its economic transformation, the Russia started its economic transformation from centrally planned economy to market economy in 1991, 92. And this was the same time when economic liberalization started in India. Uh, so since then, uh, you know, both the economies have moved quite far away from each other. They used to be, uh, you know, very close partners during those days. But now, uh, you know, Russian trade, India-Russia trade is less than 1% of total Indian trade. I mean, the total Indian trade is about 800 billion, and India-Russia trade is less than 10 billion. So, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is that in, during old days, it was the public sector from both the countries which was really determining factor. But now, the private sector from both the countries, they have not been able to take advantage from growing markets, both in Russia as well as in India. Thank so you. There we really must leave it, worry. Professor. There we must leave it. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now, what is behind the growing gap between the haves and the have-nots? Income of the top 1% of U.S. households has quadrupled over the last 30 years. But at the bottom end of the scale, incomes have barely changed. Ben Thompson asked the former Nobel Prize winning economist Joseph Stiglitz how evident inequality had become in the United States. The top 1% gets about 20% of all the income in the United States has about a third of all the wealth. And while they've been doing very well, the rest of the country has not. The recession has made things even worse in the years right after the recession and recovery. 93% of the gain went to the top 1%. What contributes to this? Is it simply the recession or are there a number of other forces at play? Markets don't exist in a vacuum. We have all kinds of laws that shape our economy. And the way they've shaped them in the United States, for instance, has been to favor the very top. And we've seen that in our financial markets, where uh, the bankers walked off with mega bonuses while the rest of America was left uh, picking up the, the pieces. Uh, we see it in the uh, 